Hey guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer, and welcome to part two of uh, interaction text via line trace. So now that we have our line trace inside the uh, blueprints, we're gonna make a new blueprint. So add blueprint class actor, and let's call it interaction uh, blueprint BP, and double click inside. And oh, there we go. So inside the viewport, all we're going to need is an ice cube. We're going to call it button. Like that. Set the scale to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, tab 0 0.4. And the material, we're going to go get our nice red that we did. It's the one in the Season 2 folder. Compile and save, and that's it for the viewport. Inside the event tick, we're going to get rid of those two. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cast to main character, to a first person character, yeah, and get player character, and from here promote to variable. Mind you, it's always good to do that part because if you're going to need your value somewhere else in your program, it's always going to be there. See, so yeah, you are already did a mistake over here. I like to do it like that. There we go. Compile and save. Now we're going to add our blueprint interface to our blueprint. And to do that inside the class setting, it says over here interface implemented. There's none. So I'm going to go grab my on interact interface. That was the name of my interface. And add it. And make sure to compile and save or else the next part's not going to work. You're going to right click and do an event on to no no uh, to be interact that's how I called it my function so I went to call the function inside my interface now we're gonna grab the my character and we're gonna set the interaction text that we created in the my character blueprint but we're not gonna choose the setting over here unless you're creating this to make sure that every time you interact with an object it's always the same text then yeah you can set the text you want over here but since I want to make a smart blueprint so a blueprint that's easy to customize I'm gonna create an interaction text variable over here too and we're gonna make it a text change it don't mind this error I don't know why it always happens. Compile and save. And make sure to make it editable. And you're going to understand why in a second. And we're going to connect this right over here. And we're not going to give it a default value either because we're going to set this inside the level. So now, if I drag this out inside the scene, and let's say uh, my static mesh over here was going to be a button for this one. And we're just going to scale it down to size it up, maybe move it a little bit more. There you go, it's almost centered. I'm happy with this. So, make sure that the button is gonna be block all. You could actually set this up in the in the viewport over here. Just make sure it's block all to make sure it's gonna stop the line trace. And now, the reason I did this is because uh, with the text variable, is because now when I go on the interaction self I can choose what is the text to interact with so that means if I wanted to use the same blueprint for that door over here and the static mesh instead of that button would be a door I could write a uh, press press on the code E to interact with button or interact with door but since now we're interacting with a button that's what you want to see and now if I would drag a copy over here and it'd be the same program it would work nevertheless so now if I jump inside the scene it's not gonna work yet because the blueprint itself it doesn't show any message to get the message you're gonna need a UMG a user interface per se or a widget blueprint I already have one over here. If you don't have one, right click user interface and make a new widget blueprint. Call it whatever you want and get out. 
but I'm going to go inside my user interface. Anyways, there's already a progress bar over here, but don't mind. You're going to get only the canvas panel, and that's just enough. I just need a text variable that I'm going to drag inside the canvas, stretch it out as you want, like this. And we're going to make sure the text is lined up to the middle, and compile and save. And then inside the graph, on the event construct, you're going to cast the first person character like we just did in the, in the uh, blueprint. Get the player character and make a variable out of it. That's very important. Just copy this part over here. And inside the designer tool, we're going to create a binding to the text block. Because we need, we need to set <coughs> the text that we're going to see. And that's where we're going to go get our interaction text. So here we're going to call it get interaction text. Like that. And we're going to get our new variable that we did, if you've been following with the my character. We're going to get the interaction text that's there. And connect it to the return node. Now when you jump in the scene, it should work. Well, actually, it won't work yet because the last thing, well, it works for me because I already did it. But you guys need to do that, that part. So inside the level blueprint or inside the main character, mine is inside the main character. On event begin play, I actually created the user widget and I added it to the viewport. So you might want to recreate this. So you want to create widget, get your uh, the widget that we just created, the UMG. And from the return node, just add to viewport. You don't need to make the reference. That's only for the people following my videos. But if you're just jumping in to learn how to do the interaction text, that's what you need to do. And now when that's done, you're going to be able to jump inside your scene. And since you set up the text to the interaction, oh, I don't know why it's not there anymore. So let's set it up again. OK, so I bugged on this a little while because I didn't understand what was happening. But it's actually uh, when you modify the variable that we created in the main person character, the interaction text, every time you compile and save, it's going to show like uh, the text is not there anymore. But don't be alarmed. You don't need to re-enter the text. Just click away from the blueprint and click back on the blueprint, and you're going to see the text is still there. It's this unknown bu bug with uh, Unreal. So I guess at least we got it figured out. So now if I jump inside the scene, and I walk towards the computer, you're going to see the message, press E to interact. But what happens is that when I look away, it doesn't go away, and the debug for my line trace is still in the way. So let's fix that real quick. So inside the main character, we're going to go inside our trace interaction text function. And f in the draw debug type, we're going to put it back to none, compile and save. And also for the interaction text, every time that it's false, that you're not, inter that you're not firing this message, that's, that's the line trace. Whenever it is something, it's going to look for this event. So whenever it doesn't fire, that means whenever it's off, you need to reset the text to none, to nothing. Compile and save. Now, if you notice, and I click, I'm on the blueprint, you're going to see again the text went away. If I click away and I click back, it's back. So if I jump inside the scene, now everything should work properly. Press F11 to see full screen. Walk towards the uh, console, you see the text, you look away, it goes away. And it's pretty precise too. If ever you wanted it to be more precise, you could just uh, use a box collision, wrap it around the button, and then it would be more precise. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial for this uh, interaction text line trace. And the next episode, we're going to be working on the second button, and we're going to start working with Event Dispatcher. It's a, a fun way and very useful way to communicate from a blueprint to a level blueprint. So stay tuned. Have a good day.